My name is Darren Collins, and for the last 15 years, I have been a juggler, puppeteer, and magician. Yeah, that's the hardest part of all, is just telling people what, it is, what exactly it is that I do, because I do so many different things. I have to just choose a narrative, because there are so many narratives in my life. I mean, being like a knife thrower, that's just a hobby, I suppose. So I can't say I'm a knife thrower. I can say I'm a magician, but I would never qualify as being a magician. When I, when I meet other magicians, I say, oh, I'm a juggler. If I meet a juggler, I'm like, ah, I'm a comedian because I don't wanna, I'm not that good at anything. I just love these things and I love having a job where I can just enjoy myself and have a job where I can sort of express joy to other people. Well, I grew up. I grew up as the last of, of five children, and so all of my siblings were much, much older than I am. The closest one is eight years older, and then fifteen years older, older, sixteen years old, eighteen years older. So I ended up just being alone in the woods in the Pacific Northwest, running around by myself, building forts, and listening to and I listened to records like old seventy eights, forty fives, and thirty threes, uh, and it's all like Disney records, like the retelling of like the. Uh, like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and like the No Mobile Mary Poppins and that sort of stuff, Winnie the Pooh. And so I sort of lived in this sort of fantasy world by myself as a child with, with uh, older parents. And so I was constantly fed just stories and, and um, in my imagination. I just lived in my own imagination. And so I've sort of grown up as a sort of half creative person. I consider myself like half creative because I am around such amazingly creative people in my life. I've never considered myself to be particularly good at creativity because I recognize what good creativity is and I'm not quite there. My very first experience um, uh, that led me down my path is I was sitting in, in Hamilton Elementary School and a juggler came to school and he did this great presentation for all of us. We all just love this guy and they said, who here can juggle? And I raised my hand, I raised my hand, and I said, I can do it, I can do it. And he brought me up on stage, and I juggled in front of all these, uh, all, all my peers, and they started chanting my name, Darren, Darren, Darren. And I was like, wow, people are loving what I'm doing, I'm juggling, and it, it's, it's so exciting for me, and I did really poorly, you know, but it was, it, it, it sort of changed the direction of my life. And it made me go, I like this. I'm really attracted to the idea of, of, of presenting something in front of a big group. All I want to do is do the exact same thing. But instead of teaching people about, you can be a juggler, or you can be a scientist, or you can be an astronaut, or, or I, I can inspire you today uh, to become a community leader, those things are great. But what I get to do is I get to go in and teach a tangible, life-saving information to large groups of people. It's, uh, it's almost magical how, how um, a simple, 45 minute presentation can change the tra trajectory of someone's life. 90% of the children on planet Earth who are born with HIV live in Sub-Saharan Africa. So to do a presentation in Swahili, to reach large groups of people in that area is one of the most effective way to combat uh, the transmission of HIV on planet Earth. I was in Dallas a few years ago in the stand-up community, stand-up comedy community, and I met a comedian who was from Africa, he's from Zambia, and he said, man, we should use puppets to go to my country to teach about AIDS. And I was like, well, tell me more. Like, why, why would you do that particular thing? He said, well, uh, in my culture, it's just sort of taboo to talk about STDs, to talk about sex, to talk about condom use. And even while he was talking to me, he'd look over his shoulder when he said the word condom. And he said, I just don't feel comfortable saying that in public. But like with a puppet, you can say anything. And I thought that was a great idea. I was like, wow, that would be wonderful to actually use the skill that I have to go to, to Africa to teach about HIV and AIDS. What I did is I, I write down my goals on my Facebook about section. Uh, that's where I, ever I have a goal, something I want to do with my life, I type it out there, just, to, just so it's always there. Whenever I go to my own profile, I see a list of things that I wish I could do. And so that was one of them. I said, man, one day I want to go to Africa and teach HIV and AIDS. As it turns out, I was doing another humanitarian aid project in Central America. 
I was building houses. So one of them was a house made out of, made out of trash. The other was a monolithic dome house in Belize and in Guatemala. And during that time, I had an issue with my renter because um, I've been renting out my house in the USA while I travel and do different projects. And I, I lost my tenant and I was uh, nervous because I really needed to make sure I had a tenant. So I've just put on Craigslist, hey, if anyone needs a house, here are pictures, you know, and just put it out there. And someone responded to the Craigslist ad while I was in Guatemala. So then a month later, I went to, to collect my first check. It ended up that this family that had moved into my house was a Kenyan family. And they said, hey, what's the deal with the puppets? And I told them about sort of my, my history. And they said, you know what? We really need puppets in Kenya. That would be a really good educational tool for our, for our home country. And I was like, that's what I would love to do. Uh, I'm just waiting for someone to sort of invite me. And they said, well, we can, I, uh, the man who rented the house for me, he said, I'll take you to Kenya. I go there every month. And so why don't you just come with me and you can, you can try this out. And so I did. That's how, that's how it happened. I just ended up going to Kenya. He showed me around a little bit and then disappeared like a week and a half later. The guy was just gone doing his own thing. And so here I am in Kenya on a three week trip and I started to meet more and more people and meet more and more people and make really good contacts. And some people invited me to stay longer. So I extended my trip and I ended up staying for five months instead of for three weeks. And in that time, I just made a lot of great contacts, did a lot of great work, but that's kind of how I ended up going. It was just having that seed planted by a, a local comedian who wanted to teach his peers about HIV and AIDS. You know, when he came to me, he said, Darren, 17 of my classmates from high school have already died of HIV. I just, we need a way to communicate this to where people will listen and I think puppets will do it. And I was like, man, I will show you anything you want to know. And then to have my, my tenant, at my house come along and say, would you like to go to Kenya? Sure, this sounds perfect. This, And, and then all of a sudden I look on my Facebook uh, profile and I go, I have accomplished that goal. I wrote it down, uh, you know, two years ago and now it's happening. I'm here in Kenya, I'm doing that exact thing. And uh, the rest is history, I guess. So I left Africa having just finished doing a 45 minute presentation for children in an orphanage who are living with HIV. And I saw the response and I said, yes, my idea will work. It does work. We saw tangible results that day from children who could list every point that we made. And every one of those points was something that directly affected uh, the life of that child and it made me feel like I'm on the right track I've actually been going the right direction all the events in my life so far have culminated in this one presentation where children who were born with this disease left my presentation knowing more about their situation and feeling better about themselves and it worked And so the problem isn't mechanical. The problem isn't a lack of resources. The problem is education. And I want there to be a day when I go back to Sub-Saharan Africa and I hear, yeah, people are getting their medications. And this year we learned that there's no new infections because the people know how it works. They now understand how transmission is really taking place and the lore and the fable and the myths and the misinformation has gone away because there's this traveling group of puppeteers who have dedicated their lives to traveling this portion of the world and teaching people tangible life-saving techniques, concepts in a way that doesn't offend in a way that is culturally appropriate and in a way where people are open to hearing the truth about HIV and AIDS. There's this group, this group of volunteers who are using the performing arts and giving their lives, their time, their money to helping these people and it's worked. That's, that's my dream. 